promised you guys an uh, unpackaging. Unfortunately, I got ahead of you. Um, I couldn't help myself. It was like Christmas. So I went ahead and unpacked everything all back here and around the back. So uh, some pieces, uh, fuel pump and uh, fuel filter holders, mounts, I guess you'd call. Um, we got some stainless steel braided line kit for the wheel wood for the fronts. Um, we were running the stainless steel brake lines, which we got those, a whole bunch of fittings. Um, I think this is 30 foot or 25 foot uh, fuel line, dash eight um, and so we'll be using that. Uh, and let's see what we got around the back here. Oh yeah, big old aluminum fuel tank. That is 25 gallons from Roads Race Cars. Thanks guys, appreciate it. They did an awesome job packing it. It came in a cardboard box that was wrapped in plastic. This was wrapped in plastic and then they used foam all the way around it. So um, with the service carriers and everything else, uh, you know, it, it wasn't, it's untouched. The only thing that you probably saw is my fingerprints all over, my nasty fingerprints all over the uh, aluminum. So today what we're going to be doing, I'm hoping to have everything to get the fuel system done. Um, we do have a pump and filter. This is a hundred micron that goes to, I don't know if you saw it or not, but we have another smaller tank here, which is our purge tank. Uh, basically what's going to happen is that first pump's going to pump it up from the fuel cell under the car up to this tank and then from that tank there's another inside uh, pump it's going to pump it through the second filter and shoot all the way up and then a return line back to the main tank here i don't have anything to strap this one down yet but it does have a sending unit for the level which is awesome and then we started doing mapping out where the exhaust is going to come out uh, we may end up cutting this section out I would like, you know, either two, three inch or two, four inch straight pipes to come out here, or at least some type of exhaust. We may do something with carbon fiber in this area. I'm not sure yet, but um, definitely want to look at it and figure that part out. But uh, let's get started. Okay, so I, I wanted to share how I do the AN fittings. This is PTFE, so this is good for E85 and any of the other fuels, racing fuels and everything else. You probably just saw me cut it. What I do is I put electrical tape around it. <clears throat> I use my uh, cutters here. I think I got those off of either Harbor Freight or eBay, one of the two. Uh, you can tell they're used and abused. Anyways, they're uh, used for cutting metal. Okay, so next thing I do, um, I bring see how that's crimped now uh i need to reopen it so i take a pair of uh you have to excuse my coworker over there i take a pair of uh needle nose pliers open that up just a little bit you don't want to spread it up too much because um after you remove the tape you're gonna have to take this insert now again this is just for ptfe so uh what i'm gonna do next is you can either you can either put this in now or you can put it in later but actually what i what you need to do first let's back up um, all right, so before you remove the tape, before you put the aluminum uh, piece in there, you got to put this on, right? So this is the piece that wrenches it all up. Once it's complete, that's this guy here. So let's go ahead and feed him through. You will have to move this. I would suggest using some type of uh, cut-resistant gloves because this stuff is nasty when it hits, when it gets to you. I mean, it will puncture your skin. Um, the ends are very sharp, so be very careful. Uh, and that's my rant, so... Um, all right, so this one's gonna be a little bit more difficult. This was the end that came to me from the factory, so I'm trying to save it. Most of the time I just cut off um, their end and then start like fresh, but we're, we're gonna see if we can save this. So this is splayed out a lot more than I usually try to get it to. 
So we'll see what happens here. Push that down till it seats all the way in the end. You can actually see the PTFE bump up against the stop that's in there. All right, so that's now complete. You can then bring this piece up. And then at the same time, what we're gonna do, we're gonna go ahead and you can lube that up with either spit or you can lube it up with WD-40, whatever you wanna do. Right now, these, uh, what are these? These are TTRs, uh, found them on eBay. Um, they seem to be working fairly well. So yeah, just slides right in. I have had issues with other AN fittings not working correctly. So might have to get a little rammy jammy with it, but we'll see if we can't get this to seat. There it went, pop, pop. Um, and then bring that collar up, start to turn it. You can see that it's gonna start fitting, all right? Now here's the thing. You have to put pressure on this this way to keep it seated in that aluminum bung or it will pull this back out. So that's why I got this cloth here. Um, you go and tighten off of this piece here, the second piece. This is gonna rotate, so you wanna get that second piece because it's a stagnant part. All right, so put that in your vise, clamp it down gently. Um, and then with pressure down, I can start taking my custom AN wrench in this case, uh, Arkansas speed wrench are also known as a um, crescent wrench and just start working it down. Again, make sure you keep pressure. Don't want to bend the pipe because once you, if you bend the pipe, uh, it will crease. So you need to keep pressure and just move it down. Hey, keep it down over there, huh? I'm trying to teach these people how to do any fittings. <laughs> just kidding. Talk all you want, bud. Oh, I know. We're almost done. There it is. All right. So, once you have it seated, you can see now I even marked it a little bit. Kyle, where's my end? wrenches, man, that you had? I know they're in the back of your car. Um, so here, you can see it's seated completely up against this stop. Everything's good, tight, ready to rock. You have yourself a nice AM fitting um, piece. So we will put this on like you're seeing on the tank to the pump Then we got to pull the tank got to drill the holes for the pump mount and we'll keep going do a different one here the last one was in the vise this one will be on the car to give you an example here so uh, the return line is going to the surge tank I called it a purge tank earlier it's not a purge tank it's a surge tank um, I uh, bumble truck that one so uh, what we're gonna look at doing here is I have my mark we're gonna tape it first so we'll start with that it doesn't need to be much it's just to keep it from fairing out um, whenever you cut it so you want to make sure it's just uh i usually just go about one and a half rounds uh, put the center to center mark again match that up that's where it's going to go um we'll go ahead and cut that so center to center 
had just enough with what we bought. That's all that's left over. So good measuring. All right. So with that being there, now we'll take our, our smaller um, needle noses. Again, we just want to round that out, get it a little bit uh, back to its original form. You can kind of bend it, bend it back a little bit back there. Um, again, this is just to, this stuff's sharp. Um, almost forgot my gloves because I do not want to get stuck. This stuff stinks when you get, when you get hurt with it. It, uh, it is not friendly. All right, so first we want to get this guy over. Make sure you got all your strands. Sometimes you got to spin it. Ta-da, right? Next, this has barbs in it. Um, it has a stop at the very end. So we'll put that in there. I'm hoping my hat's not blocking your view. So I'm getting my head down here. Make sure, again, no strands are getting caught in between the aluminum and the uh, PTFE. It can be very difficult, so make sure you're doing it right. Push it till it's completely seated. Sometimes you'll need to uh, tap it into place. You can use your old trusty hammer here. Again, you want to make sure it's square. This one's kind of going a little crooked, so we're going to adjust it like so. Bring that collar up and over. Um, we will, before we do that, before I bring that collar up and over, let's screw back down here, get it ready. Um, we can lube this up. I got some uh, PV Blaster here. Again, just like before, you can use spit, you can use whatever you want. Uh, just needs a little bit of lube on there to help get it through that PTSD. Just helps the process. All right, so get your best angle. Again, this stuff can be freaking ridiculously stiff to work with. Get your best angle that you're gonna get it on there with. I'm gonna tighten that one up. Give her a push. There it clicked once. There, it went. It's not always going to be the easiest stuff to work with, that's for dang sure, but it does a good job sealing. Um, all right, so that being on now, I'm going to go ahead and screw this on. The first bit here, it's uh, just getting hung up a little bit. I am going to tighten it down on the surge tank first, that way it's not ruining that side of the fitting this is probably not where i'm gonna put it in the remainder but i want it to be set so i can start prying on this side okay again using your specialty an custom wrenches or your crescent wrenches in my case all right so that is our return line our fuel line and next we just need to hook up the pump that's underneath um, so we'll do that next i will run one more line luckily i have a couple extra a little extra of this from another project so we'll be able to get under the car and to that pump To sum it all up, everything's been run for the entire fuel system. Everything's hooked up. Um, I gotta run a vent line off the main tank. And everything's tightened, 
Next, the only thing we got to do is kind of just do some housekeeping with some zip ties. Because I love zip ties. Keep everything together nice. Uh, these braided lines go through kind of a rough edge here, so I'll get some uh, edge protectors. Hey, and if you don't have flush cut cutters, I don't know exactly, they're like micro cutters or something. Um, you can get them from Harbor Freight. You should get some. And if you don't flush cut your zip ties, then... You. Yeah, because those things, the metal ones, forget it. But at least these, when you do this and you flush cut them, oh, it's so nice. Just snip. Oh, like butter, man. Now I don't have to worry about reaching my arm down here and gashing it open. So, helpful tip. Get some of these. I think they're like four bucks. All right, that's it. Oh, no, it's not it. Still got some more stuff to do tonight. I have one more inline filter. This guy, 10 micron. Um, I waited to put this in. I'm gonna have to make a break in the line somewhere, but I waited to put it in because I wanted to make sure it was easily accessible. I didn't want it here because of the bend. So it'll probably go up on the fuel rail. And again, that's why I got that other, uh, other mount, which you might have to figure something out. I might have to get another piece of rubber or something in there because this is just a little bit smaller than an actual uh, Bosch uh, 044. So let's do that. That's as far as we're going to get tonight, or today, or whenever you're watching this. Uh, got the filter in, mounted it, and then uh, I had some fender, I don't know, gasket, gasket, I don't know, I don't know, it's a rubber stuff, I put it around there so it won't rub the stainless, and I mean that's ultimately what this is for. Um, I put a clamp off of the mount, and then also what you saw me earlier doing was cutting a radiator tube to, like I was telling you, because it doesn't, it's not this big as the Bosch 044, so you need a little buffer there, and I got that in. Everything's tight. Next time we'll uh, be touching these fittings is probably when we start it up, if any of them leak, I, you know, we'll see. There's a gasket right here, a rubber O-ring that I'm a little worried about, but again, until we fire this bad boy up, we won't know. Um, yeah, so that's it until we get the motor in, and then once we get the motor in, then we'll be able to uh, hook the rest of that fuel rail up. I was able to convert it to uh, dash eight AN fittings up front too, with a little help from the old internets. And uh, yeah, man, it's looking good. It's looking fun. Oh yeah, don't mind this. Yeah, it's it looks good. It's fine. We'll hit it with a rattle can someday. All right. All right. Till next time. See ya.